B'siyat HaDashmai, we're going to learn Chagiga Daf Beis, we're going to start in the very first Mishnah, at the beginning of the Masechta. Hakil Chayovim Bereia, any godl, any mature, healthy, normal adult has the mitzvah of Reia, and that is to come to the Beis HaMikdash three times a year, on Pesach, Shavuos and Sukkot, and with him he brings an korban called Oilas Horeia, which we're going to learn about soon. Chutz mi cheresh somebody who's a cheresh, somebody who's, this would be loosely translated as deaf, we'll learn more about that soon. Shoita, somebody who's not, not his mind is not right. Vekotten, or a minor. Vetumtum, or somebody who, it's not clear from his exposed organs whether he's a male or female. Vandragonus is somebody who shares the organs of both a male and a female. Venoshim, women, vavodim. The slaves that have not been freed. We'll have to see what that's talking about. Hachiger, somebody who's lame. Vahasuma, somebody who's blind. Vachoyle, somebody who's sick. Vazokin, or an elderly person. Umisheina yochil lalois beraglov, or somebody who's not able to go up from Yerushalayim to the Azara, to the Beis Hamikdash, with on his feet then he's also exempt from Re'iya, from going and seeing and being seen in the base of Mikdash on Yom Tov. Ve'ezau cotton. What is the, the age of a child, of a minor, that even though he doesn't have any biblical requirement until he's bar mitzvah to, to go to and do this mitzvah, but from what age is he chinuchable? Is he what we would call the age where we can start educating him with this mitzvah? All the while that he's not even old enough that he can be that he can ride on the shoulders of his father when his father is going up to go from Yerushalayim to the Temple Mount to the Beis Hamikdash the Harabais then that child is too young and even the rabbinical requirement that that the Chachomim put on the father and the mother to educate a child even before he's a godl, before he's bar mitzvah, to do the mitzvahs if he's not old enough to be able to walk and to, to at least be taken up on the shoulders of his father, then he's exempt. Divri Bez Shammai, that's the opinion of Bez Shammai. Or Bez Hillel Oimrim, Bez Hillel argue and say, Kol she'ena yochi lechu is b'yodoy shel oviv. It's got to be somebody who, if he were a godl, in a godil version of his abilities, he would be required minatayra to to do aliyah l'regel. Then, as a child, there's a chiyuv of chinuch. Now, what's required for a godil that he should actually be able to walk from Yerushalayim to Harabais? So, kol she'ena yochi lechus biyodi shel oviv. If this child cannot hold his father's hand, v'lalis Yerushalayim laharabais and walk up from the Yerushalayim to the Harabais, shenemer as it says in the pasuk. Sholosh Regolim, that the Yomim Tovim are called Regolim, which also has the, spells the word Raglaim. You've got to be able to walk. Anybody who, and even a Godel, who cannot walk from Yerushalayim to Arabais, is Potter from Re'iyah. So a child who cannot hold his father's hands and walk up is not yet of the age that one is required to educate him to come to the Beis Hamikdash for Aliyah Regal. Bishamai Oimrim, and now we're talking about two of the three korbonos that every person would bring on Yom Tov. One is the oilas re'iya, a korban oila one brought when coming to the Beis Hamikdash for Yom Tov. One is the shalmei chagiga. There's also the korban shlomim, which we're not going to, the shalmei simcha, which we're not going to discuss now. So, but b'shamay say, b'shamay oimrim, ha the oilas re'iya, shtei kesef has to be, has to cost at least two kesef, which is two silver coins. It's a third of a dinner. That's the shtei kesef, a chagiga, but the shalmi chagiga, mo'o kesef, it's enough if it just costs one mo'o of silver. Beis Hillel Oymrim, Beis Hillel say her ear, the korban oilas her ear is mo'o kesef, v'ha chagiga, but the shalmi chagiga, shtei kesef, and we're going to discuss this in the Gemara. Says the Gemara. The, the opening word, the first word of the Mishnah was hakil chayovim bir'iyah. Everybody is chayav to do the mitzvah of re'iyah, of coming to the Beis Hamikdash. And then chutz besides, and there's a long list of those who are exempt. But the word hakil seems to be not just anyone who's not in the bracket of those who are accepted, or who, from those exceptions, they 
Achayev. There's Hakil. It's coming to include something that we may have thought wouldn't be included. Hakil. This word Hakil. Lasuyimai. What's it coming to include? Says the Gemara. Lasuyimai. We're going to have a number of suggestions. The first one is Lasuyimai. Misha Chetzi Eved Vechetzi Ben Chayrin. We saw in the Mishnah that somebody who is an avodim she'enam m'shukhrorim. That means we're talking here about an evid, Kenani, a non-Jewish evid. Once a non-Jewish evid is freed, then he has, he's like a geir, a convert, and he's chayiv in all the mitzvahs in the Torah. Whilst he's not yet, whilst he's still a proper evid she'enam m'shukhrorim, he has the same status as women do. The question is, what happens if you've got somebody who's chetzi evid, chetzi ben chayrin, which means maybe he belonged to two people and one of them freed him. However this happened, you've got this person who half of him, monetary-wise, half of him belongs to himself, he's a free man, but half of him is, belongs to his master. So somebody who's chetzi evid, chetzi ben chayrin, I may have thought that since part of him is an evid, He's, he's um, exempt from Re'ia. That's why it says Hakil. No. Even he is Chayev for Re'ia. We have to understand how can it be? There's a part of him which is a slave. And we said that slaves, Avodim She'inam Mushukhrarim, are exempt because he's like a woman. He's not completely Chayev. So how can he be Chayev? We're going to discuss that in the Gemara. Says the Gemara. Okay, if you just read the first words, Hakil Chayovim Re'ia, it includes even somebody who is half a slave and half a free man. But Ula Ravina de Omar, but Ravina who explains that the reason that the Mishnah two lines later says that one of the exempt the, ex, the exceptions, one of those who are exempt of mitzvah sriya, is avodim she'ena mushukhorim. It doesn't just say avodim, slaves. We take it for granted, slaves are not freed. No, avodim she'ena mushukhorim. So Ravina says that those words are teaching us that you're only exempt if you are to Omar, Misha Chetzi Eved Vechetzi Ben Chayrin, Potur Min Ariya. That a, a, a slave, if there's any level of Einam Mushukhrorim, if there's any part of him which is not free, is he is still exempt of Ariya. So Ravina reads into the Mishnah of Avadim She'enam Mushukhrorim that this Chetzi Eved Chetzi Ben Chayrin, even though only half of him is a slave, is exempt from Ariya. So how can you say Hakil Chayovim Ariya? The word Hakil is including that you have to, that he's chayev for ear if he's chetzi evet chetzi ben chayrim. Hakoil la mai. So if the word hakoil is not including chetzi evet chetzi ben chayrim, that he's chayev, because Ravina explained avodim she'enu m'shukhorim says that chetzi evet chetzi ben chayrim is potur, what's the word hakoil coming to include? Says the Gemara suggestion number two, la asuye chiger b'yoyim rishayin. If somebody is a chiger, if somebody is lame, on the first day of Yom Tov, and then when he became healthy, on the second day of Yom Tov, because Yom Tov is a long Yom Tov, there's a whole week of Sukkot, a whole week of Pesach. So what happens if he was a Chigir B'yayim Rishon? So I may have thought, maybe, maybe he's exempt. No. Hakil Chayovim B'Ri'ya, since on day two he's healthy, or at some point during Yom Tov he became healthy, then he is Chayov to, when he becomes healthy, he is Chayov to come to Beis HaMikdash and to bring his Oilas Ri'ya. So the Gemara says, okay, but that's actually a machlekes. It's a machlekes amiroim. Whether, uh, let's see. Hon yichelaman Omar, we're going to learn about this later on on Daftes. According to the opinion that holds, kulon tashlumin zelaze, which means that any day could be a day that you become required to come to the base of Migdosh. It could be on day one. If you were not chayev on day one because you were lame, and on day two you're chayev, you're chayev on day two. And if you don't bring it on day two, you have to bring it on day three. If you were not chayev on day two because you were still lame, and on day three you became well, on day three you're chayev. If you didn't bring it on day three, you'll have to make it up on day four, and on, etc. So if you say, kulon tashlumin that every day of Yom Tov, if you become able to be required at that point, you become chayev at that point, then I can understand how the words hakil chayovim b'ra'iya are teaching us exactly that. That even though on the first day when Yontav came in, you were exempt, nonetheless, since you became well, some point during Yontav, you now become Chayev. Not Hakil Chayov in Beria. Elon Omar, according to the other opinion on Daftes, Kulon Tashlumim Derishoin, that all the days of Yontav are only a Tashlumim for the first day, which means the first day is the only day that determines are you Chayev or Potor. If you were Chayev, then if you didn't bring the Korban, then 
all the days of Yom Tov are days where you can bring, you can catch up and bring the korban that you were required to bring on day one. But this opinion holds that if on day one you are not chayev, then no later point can you become chayev during Yom Tov. If so, the question comes back. What's hakel chayovim b're'iyah? All the days of Yom Tov are just Tashlumim to make up for the Korban you required on the first day. Says the Gemara, a third, up, a third suggestion. If somebody is blind in one of his eyes, and we're going to learn more about blindness later on. But if somebody is blind in one of his eyes, then he's still Chayev to to, to Berea. So this that it says in the Mishnah on the third line, Vahasuma, that a blind person is exempt of Re'iya, that's only if he's blind in both eyes. If he's blind in one eye, Hakil Chayovim Berea, they're all required with Re'iya, even this person who's blind in one eye. However, Utuloi Ki Hai Tana, it's not like the Tana in the following Brisa. The Tanya, Yoichanon Ben Dehavoi Oimer, Mishum Reb Yehuda. It was said in the name of Rabbi Yehuda, Suma ba'achas me'enov, if a person is blind in one eye, potur min ar-iya. he's exempt from re'iyah. And then the question will come back, hakil, what's the hakil? Shenemar, where does Rabbi Yehuda learn this from? So it says in the Pasuk, the Pasuk says, Sholo ish pa'omim ba'shono, three times a year, which is referring to Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot, that a person should be seen in the Beis Hamikdash by Hashem. Now the word Yeira'e, that's the way we read it. But if you were to take away the vowels that we know are t- uh, instructing us on how to read it, the letters themselves could read Yir'e, C, which means that the same letters, Yud, Resh, Aleph, Hey, it could be pronounced as Yir Es It could be pronounced as it, as is the correct way of pronouncing it. And that is Yir is to be seen. And we know in the Torah there's a rule of Kri and Ksiv that we take seriously not only the way it's pronounced but also the way it's written that in a way that can be pronounced otherwise. So it says Yir E and Yir O'e. You've got the Kri and the Ksiv. Kederech Shebo in the same way as Hashem comes to see the person in the Beis HaMikdosh, and that's the Yeir air that the person is being seen by Hashem, so to Hashem is coming to be Kachbo Leiroi, so to Hashem is coming to be seen by the people when they come to the Beis HaMikdosh, and the, he is being he experienced by people. And we compare the Hashem being seen by us, Yeir air, and us seeing Hashem Yireh, we compare them. Ma Lirois Bishte Einov, in the same way as when Hashem sees us, he does it, so to speak, with a full vision, so to speak, with two eyes. Af Lirois, when Hashem is, is being seen and experienced by us, Bishte Einov, it's got to be with both eyes of the person, and therefore, says Rabbi Yehuda, if he's blind in one of his eyes, he's exempt from Ri'ah. Vi'i Eima, you could suggest, I mean, the last suggestion was Sumo Ba'achas Me'enov and not like Rabbi Yehuda. Vi'i Eima, it could be La'olam Kedomrin on Mi'kora. We can go back to suggestion number one, that the Hakuil is including Misha Chetzye Evet Chetzye Ben Chayrim. Somebody who's half a free man is required in the Ri'ah. You asked a question, the Kokashi Lechahod Ravina, the Ravina said that the reason it says in the Mishnah two lines later, Avodim She'ina Mushukhrarim are exempt, it means if there's any part of the person that is a slave, he's exempt, even if it's just half of him, then that would be contradicting what we're saying, Hakil Chayovim Beriya. The answer is Loikashia. It's true that it's a contradiction, but it's not a question. Why? Because it's actually two stages we're about to see that Bishilil at first assumed that a Chetzi Eved, Chetzi Ben Chayrin, has at least the status of half an Eved, half a slave, in which case, that's, and that's why the Mishnah says, Avodim She'enom Shukhrarim, that, and Ravina explained it means that if he's even just half a slave, he's exempt. However, at some stage later on, Bishilal said, no, even somebody who's half a slave, he has the status of being completely freed. So they didn't want to change the Mishnah, because once the Mishnah has set in, People remembered the Mishnah, they didn't want to change it, but they added in the word Hakil to say that now that Bishilo has changed their minds and have said that somebody who is half a slave is actually as if he's completely free, therefore from that point on, a Chetzi Evet Chetzi Ben Chayrin has got the din of a free man and Hakil Chayovim Bar'iyah is going to be Chayev to Fur'iyah.
And that's called the Mishnah Rishayna and the Mishnah Achreina, the first version of Bis Hillel and how they changed their minds. Ditnan we learned in a Mishnah. Misha Chetzi Eved Vechetzi Ben Chayrin. Somebody whose half of him is a slave, half of him is free. Oived is Rabbi Yoim Echod Vesatzmi Yoim Echod. So he's free to work for himself half of the time and half of the time he's got to work for his master. Divri Bis Hillel, that was the opinion of Bis Hillel. Omru Lem Bis Shammai. The Shammai said to Bis Hillel, Tikantem is Rabbi. Okay, so you've managed to fix and, so to speak, to make out a deal with his master. He's half a slave. He belongs to his master half. He has to work half for his master. However, you've left him hanging. It's Atzmoy Leit Tekantem. What about himself? Who's he going to marry? How's he going to have children? Lissa Shifcha, to marry a, a Shifcha, which is something which an Evid Knani, a non-Jewish slave, is allowed to marry a Shifcha then he can't marry a shifcha in a yochil because of the part of him which is not a slave. And somebody who's a free man, he's got the halacha of a kosher Yisrael, he's not allowed to marry a shifcha. Bas in a yochil, he can't marry a regular free woman because, because there's half of him which is a slave. And a regular kosher woman is not allowed to marry a, a, a non-Jewish slave. Libotil, you're going to say, don't get married? The world was only created in order that we should multiply. Shenema, as it says in the Pasuk, in Yeshaya, the world was not created in order to be void. It was actually created, it was, the world was formed in order to be inhabited. In order for the for the tikkun oilam, for the world to be able to be functioning and become inhabited, then koifin es rabbi, we force the, the master, v'oise oise ben chayrin, we force the master to free the slave in order that the slave should be able to be a completely free man. However, the, the slave belongs to the master, which means that the value of half this slave is actually owed to the master. The case of Leishtar, indeed, they write a legal document that commits this now freed slave to actually have to pay the master with time, he has to pay for half of his value, al chetzi dom of half of his value. The chazu beis hillel, the hoyres kedivri beis shamai, and beis hillel agreed to beis shamai and said that indeed a chetzi eved chetzi ben chayrin, we force the master to free him. And after beis hillel changed their minds to lahoyres to rule like beis shamai, at this point even beis hillel the is like beis hillel in almost every case. So now Bis Hillel will agree that even though he's still half a slave, he's a chetzi evit chetzi ben chayrin. But since we are going to require and force the master to free him, for all intents and purposes, he has the status of a free man. And that's why it says in the Mishnah, hakil chayovim bir'iyah. So indeed, before Bis Hillel changed their minds, whilst Bis Hillel said he's half evit, half ben chayrin, indeed, avodim she'inam m'shukhrarim, since he's partially evit, he's exempt of ri'ya. After Bis Hillel, ruled like Bishamai and said we're going to force the master to free even the second half of him. They added the word Hakil to the Mishnah, Hakil Chayovim Bere'iyah, even that person is Chayov Bere'iyah because for all intents and purposes he's about to be freed. Continues the Gemara. Chutz mi cheresh shoyta v'kotten chule, we saw in the Mishnah that somebody who is deaf, let's translate cheresh as deaf just for now, Shaita, somebody whose mind is not right, the cotton or a minor, is exempt. They're exempt from all mitzvahs, but because they, they don't have any das, they don't have the correct level of maturity in their, in their minds, in their knowledge, in their connection, and therefore they're potter. Says the Gemara, Ktoni cheresh dumya de shaita the cotton. We've written here this Mishnah. It puts together in the same bracket a deaf person with, with shoita and cotton. Ma shoita the cotton, in the same way as a shoita and cotton, everybody understands that the reason they're exempt is the lav bene dea because they're not, their mind are not sufficiently mature to be able to have expectations of them. Af so too, when we speak about a deaf person, what type of deaf person is exempt? The lav a type of deaf person who is a type of cheresh who doesn't, his mind is not sufficiently matured. The Kumash Malon, and then we would have proof from this Mishnah, could it none? Like we learned in another Mishnah, that cheresh shedibru chachomim bekol mokim. Whenever the chachomim spoke about a cheresh, who is somebody who is exempt from all mitzvahs, it's talking about somebody she'enei she'mea ve'enei medaber. Not only does he not hear, he also doesn't speak. Because we assume that somebody who didn't 
didn't develop not his speech and not his ability to hear such a type of person, his das is clearly not developed and he's potter. However, ha, medaber ve'enu shemia, somebody who at some point he was well enough that maybe he, he was hearing at some point and he managed to learn how to speak and then he became deaf and now he speaks because he had learned how to speak ve'enu shemia and he doesn't hear or shemia he hears ve'enu medaber, he's mute, he can't speak. In those Chayev is chayev because if you can either speak or hear, then your das is sufficiently mature that you're bar chayuva, you're chayev. If it's eine shemea ve'eine medaber, then we say he doesn't have das. Says the Gemara, and from here we have proof, Tonina, from this Mishnah we have proof, l'hodotonu rabonon, to something we learned in a b'raisa. The b'raisa says, ha-medaber ve'eine shemea, somebody who speaks but doesn't hear. Zeh cherish, that's called cherish. Shemea ve'eine medaber, Somebody who hears and doesn't speak, it's called an ilim. It's what we translate as a mute. And both of them are sensible, mature, healthy people. Like we just saw in our, in our Mishnah. That the only cherish which is exempt is if he's similar to shait of a cotton, which means a type of cherish which doesn't hear and doesn't speak. But if he can do either of those, he's, he's not considered a shaita. Or mimai and and what, what what proof would you have? Where would you find in the Torah that somebody who's demadaber vein shemea, somebody who is speaks and doesn't hear zeu cherish, that he's called in biblical terms cherish shemea vein medaber? And where would you have a source that somebody who hears and doesn't speak zehu ilaim is considered an ilaim in biblical terms? Tchsev, we have a pasuk in Tehillim. The pasuk says va'ani and I am kecherish loy eshma. Like a deaf person who doesn't hear. Or ki'ilim, like an ilim, a mute person, lo yiftach piv, that doesn't open his mouth. So you see clearly that the word cheresh is attributed to somebody who can't hear, and the word ilim is attributed to somebody who can't speak. Vi'iboy seima. And if you want, you can add, you can say, could the omri inchi, like people say, that the word ilim, alef lamad mem, which we know means mute, actually spells the word ish takil. Milulei, the first and last letters of Ishtakil is Aleph and Lamad, the first letter of Milulei is Mem, the three being Ilem, Ishtakil, Milulei, his speech, his words have been taken from him, that is an Ilem. So what did we see from here? That a Cheresh, Shait of a Cotton, is a Cheresh, She'ene Medaber, Ve'ene Shemea. If, a cher- if this person is either Medaber or Shemea, he is, he is not in the same bracket as Cheresh, Shait of a Cotton. Says the Gemara, so what did we just learn? That medaber ve'ini shemea, shemea ve'ini medaber, if a person speaks but doesn't hear, or hears and doesn't speak, chayev, then he's chayev in mitzvahs, and he's chayev, in, in our context, it would mean he was chayev with her ear to come to the base of Mikdash. Says the Gemara, v'hotanya, did we not learn in a b'raisa explicitly medaber ve'ini shemea, shemea ve'ini medaber potur? We learned in a b'raisa that if a person is either can't speak or can't list, doesn't listen, doesn't hear, he's exempt from Ru'iya. We just said now that only Cheresh Shait of a Cotton is a Cheresh that is similar to Shait of a Cotton, which means that he cannot speak or hear. And now we see in the Brysa that if he's missing either one of those faculties, he's exempt from Ru'iya. Omer Ravina Vitei Merova Chisure Mechsra V'hochiktoni. You actually have to read into the Mishnah as follows. Hakil B'chayovim B'ru'iya, this Mishnah is not only talking about the Chiyuv Ru'iya, of Yom Tov, but also Basimcha, there's a Chiyuv to be happy. The way you're happy is by bringing a Shalmei Simcha, a Korban Shlomim, and we're going to learn more about that later. So everybody's Chayev, any normal, well, healthy person is Chayev Bereia or Basimcha. With the Oila Sereia, come to the base of Migdash and bring the Korban Oila and, and Simcha Vesamachto Bechagecha. Chutz besides, Micheresh Hamedaber Veinu Shemea. We have to read into the Mishnah that there's certain, there's an exemption, but not an exemption of all mitzvahs, like Cheresh of a Cotton. No, there's a unique set of exceptions just for Ri'ya. Having to come up to the base of Mikdash and bring that Korban Ri'ya has its own set of exemptions, and we're going to learn soon what the sources are. But somebody who either doesn't speak or doesn't hear is exempt from Ri'ya. Not because he's Ein Loidas, but because there's going to be Xerius Akosovs that teach us that.
Since the only reason they're exempt is because it's a Xeris HaKosov. That Xeris HaKosov is only by Re'iyah. But Chayev Basimcha, all the other mitzvahs in the Torah, they're Chayev, because we just said now, somebody who either can't hear or can't speak is a normal healthy person. There's Xeris HaKosov, why he's exempt from Re'iyah. But Simcha v'samachta b'chagecha, and to bring Shalmei Simcha, of course he's Chayev. However, a type of person who also doesn't hear and also doesn't speak, that is the cheresh, which is similar to the shoita, the cotton. Some use a shoita or a minor and potter, and he's exempt of all mitzvahs. Af simcha, even from simcha, because they are in the bracket of being that immature that they are not chayav in any mitzvahs of the Torah. Tanya na we also learn to price it to this effect. Hakel chayovim beriya. Everybody is chayev with re'iyah, ube simcha and with simcha. Chutz, besides, for cheresh ha-medaber ve'inu shemea, somebody who doesn't hear, shemea ve'inu medaber, or, or he doesn't speak. Shepturim mina re'iyah, who's exempt from re'iyah, ve'afal pisha potur mina re'iyah, even though he's exempt from re'iyah, that's only because of a specific exemption of re'iyah, but chayev be simcha, he's still chayev to v'samachto b'chagecha, because he's a normal godl for all the other mitzvahs. However, ve'es she'inu shemea, but if he doesn't hear and doesn't speak the shoita the cotton, then he's similar to shoita and to cotton. The pturin and they are exempt. Af mina simcha also from simcha. Hoyle pturin mekol mitzvah hamuris batayra. So we have an explicit brayser that says exactly what we've read into the mishnah. And now the Gemara wants to understand. If you say that these people who can either hear or speak, but not both, they're regular people, regular adults that are chayev in mitzvahs, and therefore they're chayev with the mitzvah of a samachta b'chagecha, with simcha on Yom Tov, why should they be part of from Re'iyah? What's unique about Re'iyah in this context? Says the Gemara, Le'inyan Re'iyah, Gomar, Re'iyah, Re'iyah, Mehakil. It's Xerah Sakosov, it's Xerah Shova from Hakil. In every eighth year of the Shemitah cycle on Sukkot after Shemitah, then the, there would be a concept called Hakil, where everybody would get together in the Beis Hamikdash, and the king would actually read from the Chumash, from the Mishnah Torah, and, and that would be Hakil. And regarding Hakil, it says in the Pasuk, Hakil es ha'om. You should gather together the nation, Ho'anoshim, the men, Va'anoshim, the women, Va'taf, and the children, Ve'gerucha, Sheb'sharecha, Le'man Yishmu, Le'man Yilmudu, Ve'yoru, Es Hashem, Elekeichem, Ve'shomru, Lassis, Es Kol Tivre, Atayra, Azois. So there it says explicitly, in the Pasuk, that Ve'yoru, it's got this, we're learning Re'iyah, Re'iyah. It says by Hakil, that Hakil es Ha'om, and there it says in the Pasuk, Ve'yoru, Es Hashem, Elekeichem. Uchsivin, it says regarding Aliyah Le'regel, it says, "Bevoi kol Yisrael leirois as pnei Hashem lekech b'mokim ashi yivchor tikra es atayir azoyis neged kol kol Yisrael ba'az neim." Where there it says that all of Klal Yisrael should come leirois to be seen in the base of Mikdash. So we learn the halachas of Reia from the halachas of Hakil, and by Hakil it seems that somebody who either can't see or can't speak would be exempt. And from there we learn that here with Reia. The, these people will also be exempt. The question is, where do you see in the Pasuk that says, where do you see from there that coming to Hakil is for the sake of hearing and for the sake of Yilmudu and learning, where do you see from there that somebody who can't hear or can't speak is exempt? So the Gemara says, from the word, that makes a lot of sense. In order that you should hear. If you can't hear, you're exempt. And from the words, Laman Yilmadu, that you're coming in order to learn, well, from there it obviously seems to see it, say that somebody who is who cannot speak cannot learn. We have to understand that. Vatanya, we learned in a brace on this pasuk, Laman Yishmu Prat Lamadaber Vainu Shemir. From Laman Yishmu says you're coming to do hakil in order to be able to hear. If you're deaf, you can't hear, you're exempt. Laman Yilmadu, and from the words Laman Yilmadu, Prat Lashemir Vainu Madabir. Somebody who, who hears but cannot speak, we're assuming at this point that anyone who can't speak can't learn. And therefore, when it says Laman Yilmudu, to be able to learn, then it, it exempts anybody who cannot speak. So from here we learn that by Hakel, if you either can't speak or can't hear, you're exempt. We learn out Re'iyah Re'iyah from Hakel to 
Rias for Aliyah Loregel, and that's why by Aliyah Loregel, that even though they are not Shoitim, but these people who either cannot hear or cannot speak are exempt. Says the Gemara Lememra, are you suggesting that somebody who can't speak can't learn? Why would that be true? And I'll prove it to you. There were these two people who who couldn't speak. They were in the neighborhood of Rebbe. Bnei Brote de Rebbe Eichanon ben Gudgoda. They were the children, the sons of the daughter, I mean the grandsons of Rebbe Eichanon ben Gudgoda. The Omrila others say Bnei Achosei de Rebbe Eichanon. It was the child of the sister, the children of the sister of Rebbe Eichanon. But either way, there were two people who were mute. The Chol Eimus to have us ail Rebbe lebe Medrasha. When Rebbe would come into the base of Medrash, have ailu v'yasfu kamayu. They would come up and sit with him and before him. Or Manaidu Baroshayu, and they would nod their heads, or Marachshon Sosayu, and their lips would move, but they couldn't speak. Or Boyu Rebbe Rachmi Alayu, Rebbe Davon Tashem to have mercy on them, Vitsu, they became cured and they could speak. Vishtakach, and the people found to have a Gemiri that they were well versed in Hilchasa, in, in, in the Halochas, in the Mishnayas, with Sifra, and Sifri, the Kula Ashas, and the whole Mishnayas, and everything. They knew everything. So you see clearly that not being able to speak would not mean that you can't learn. So how can you learn from the Pasuk that says, Leman Yilmadu, that you're coming to Hakel in order to learn, that that means that somebody who cannot speak is, is exempt? Why should that be true? Omar Marzutra, Kribe, you have to, it's actually you're right. In, from, the, from the way that we're supposed to pronounce Yilmadu, it would not exempt them. But it, the, the letters of Yilmadu can also be read as Yilameidu, to teach. So when it says Leman Yishmu, Leman Yilmudu, you read it Leman Yishmu, Leman Yilameidu, in order to, to teach. And somebody who cannot speak, cannot teach. Ravashi Omar, Ravashi says, Vada Leman Yilameidu. It says, it goes without saying, we can take it for granted that the words Leman Yilmudu are teaching us Leman Yilameidu, that you're coming to be able to teach. Why? I mean, it's not like you thought that it means Leman Yilmudu, because you thought at first Leman Yilmudu means to be able to learn. And then you assume that somebody who cannot speak also cannot learn. And then you just had the question from those two mute people that we mentioned in the, by Rebbe. Okay, but he says even without the, the proof, even if you wouldn't be able to prove it from those two mute people that it transpired that they could learn. Even without that, in the event that indeed somebody who cannot speak cannot learn, we would still have an issue. The Yisal Kedaytich Yilmudu, if, you, you, if you're really understanding the Brisa, that Leman Yilmudu means you have to be able to learn, and it's being mute means you cannot learn, and somebody who cannot speak, you cannot learn, if that's what Leman Yilmudu means, then Vakivan Deloy Shomar, Loi Gomar, somebody who cannot hear certainly can't learn. So if you're, if you're really understanding Yilmudu means that you have to be able to learn, then why do I need Leman Yishmu to say that somebody who cannot hear is exempt from Hakil? Just include him in the bracket of Leman Yilmudu, that you have to be, you're coming to learn. And obviously somebody who cannot hear, he's not going to learn because there's nowhere to learn from. He can't hear anything. Haim Leman Yishmu Nafka. But we're learning from the, the Brisa says from Leman Yishmu you learn that somebody you cannot hear is exempt. So from the very fact, virtue of the fact that Leman Yishmu exempts somebody you cannot hear, it must be that Leman Yilmudu is not exempting somebody you cannot learn, because that's in the same bracket as Leman Yishmu. So it must be Elovade Leman Yilameiduhu. It must be the words Leman Yilmudu is teaching us that somebody is exempt from from Hakil if he cannot teach. If you cannot teach, then we exempt somebody who cannot speak. And those are the sources why by Hakel and by Aliyah Laregel, somebody who either cannot hear or cannot speak is exempt. Somebody who both cannot hear and cannot speak, he's exempt from all the Torah, all the mitzvahs in the Torah because he's got no das, he's like a shoita v'katan. And in Mirza Hashem, in the next year, we're going to continue from here. <laughs>